need you to explain a paradox to me. Betty gives Abel a loan to build a factory so Abel can build a factory to earn money to pay off the loan? That's ridiculous. But it's not a paradox. It's a time problem. A what? Future Abel owns the factory, which enables him to repay the loan. But present Abel needs the loan so that he can build the factory that future Abel owns. The time problem is that future Abel needs a way to get resources he has to present Abel who needs them. Complete nonsense. No, no, it's a real problem. And it's something that the invention of money solves. Are you telling me that money is a time machine? No, but money can be used to transfer purchasing power across time. When a person takes out a loan, who is he ultimately borrowing from? The bank. Not really. Where did the bank get the money it's lending? From people who save money. Borrowers borrow from savers. In a sense, yes. In another sense, not really. Tell me, who pays back the borrowed money? The person who borrowed the money, of course. Not the person now, but the person in the future. Ultimately, the person who borrows money today is borrowing it from himself in the future. So Abel actually borrowed from himself to build his factory? Indirectly, yes. Present Abel borrowed the money to build the factory from present Betty's bank, which borrowed the money from present Charlie's savings, which will receive the money back from future Betty's bank. If it's the temporary use of Charlie's savings that makes the whole thing possible, why not leave Betty and her bank out of the process entirely? Betty's bank performs several important services. Without the bank, it would be much harder and riskier for Charlie to allow her savings to be used. Betty insulates Charlie from risk. Tell me, what happens if future Abel doesn't pay back the money that present Abel borrowed? Someone's gonna be pretty unhappy. Right. Betty promised Charlie that she would get her savings back even if future Abel doesn't pay up. That's very nice of her. It's more than nice. Betty is providing the service of reducing Charlie's risk, and she charges for it. She charges by loaning money to Abel at a higher interest rate than she pays Charlie. The difference in interest rates compensates Betty for the bearing the risk of Abel's loan. Wait, so the interest rate is the price of the loan? Correct. It's the price Betty and Charlie charge for moving the money across time, from future Abel to present Abel. When the interest rate is low, the price of moving money across time is cheap. So, present people borrow more from their future selves. But if Charlie were willing to bear the risk herself, we wouldn't need Betty then, right? Not quite. Betty performs another service. She acts as a central clearinghouse, a place for savers and borrowers to come together. Okay, Betty insulates savers from risk and acts as a matchmaker. Still, in a pinch, we could do without her, right? There's one more important thing. Betty consolidates savings. Suppose no one on the island saved more than 10 fish notes, but that Abel needed to borrow 50. Who could he turn to? No one. No one has that much money. No single person does. But if we put together the 10 fish notes of savings from five people, we'd have 50 notes. So it's like building a hut. The savers provide the wood, their savings, but Betty is the builder, putting the savings together into loans. It just goes to show, even if you don't see the value a person contributes, it doesn't mean they aren't contributing value.